<laughs> okay, I guess I'm gonna go. Um, you know, I, I build everything off of my excitement. <laughs> and I cannot be more excited to have this opportunity. And I think that just being able to stand bold and strong for what we have and not letting anybody not know what you're doing and that you're, you know, for me, I'm so proud to be here. And I, you know, I think everybody that knows me or comes in any kind of, you know, in, anywhere around me, they're gonna know what I'm doing and why I'm so excited. And I think somebody talked earlier about just, uh, just the excitement sometimes is what you need people to impact because, you know, in the world that we're living in, you know, people are looking for happiness and security and excitement around something that's solid. And, you know, just what this company stands for as far as the love and, you know, what we're doing is just, it, it hits all the areas of what people are looking for. So, um, did I answer that question? <laughs> I can, it's like, you know, we, we all- How many leaders does it take to get to Black Heart Server Leader? Six. There you go. Six leaders. So six leaders. So how hard is it to attract six leaders into your business? I don't think it's very hard at all because I've got a lot of amazing leaders in this room. So um, I don't think it's hard at all. You just have to like, you know, just keep going. And, and I mean, again, your people will find you if you show up as you. And, you know, I, I'm not anything without the leadership that's in this room that makes up my organization. And every day, I'm so grateful for that because I believe that you have to honor up, down, and all the way around. And it's a gift to have who you have in your organization because essentially, like, that's what I love about this business. You can't be successful unless you have amazing leaders on your team. And I don't think it's difficult to attract, but, you know, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person, right? Right, right. So, uh, so, so leadership is, you know, when you are looking for leaders, how many of you have gone through the process where you're like, oh my gosh, this is my leader. This is the right person, and they are gonna take it to the moon and back, and I just know they're gonna be successful with this, and then they, da, 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 they fizzle out. And on the flip side, who you think you, who, who you think won't do well with this does. Do any of you have that experience, Mark? Well, I've had it many, many, many times. And uh, I want to finish up on something what Brooke said also. A lot of people are brand new, and you're sitting here thinking, well, how do I attract someone who could become a superstar when I've been in the business for a day, a week, a month, or three months, I haven't really done anything yet. If you can make that connection and be sincere and real and get people to believe that you believe in what you're doing, then use all the tools, use your offlines. Every one of you has somebody that's a five heart servant leader in your offline all the way to pack. Now, we obviously can't every single one of us be calling back for three-way calls 12 hours a day, but you all have leaders above you who you can connect that person who's looking at the business to that person and take yourself out of the picture and don't make yourself the issue. Because if you're the issue, they're going to try to judge you where you are now. Have them judge the whole company. Have them judge your online leader, senior leader, whatever it might be, executive leader. And otherwise, you get intimidated. It's very easy to think, oh, well, I can't talk to that person who's never been successful. But if you look at yourself as just the messenger of the message, but then you're going to connect them with someone on this panel or someone out there who's one of the leaders in your my team, that could make a huge difference in what you're doing. Now, there's another question, though. Yeah, if you look in your organization, think of your groups today. Do you have anyone that you, and you don't need to name them by name, but anyone in your group that you're like, oh, they'll never make it. But yet they're doing really well. <laughs> I honestly don't have anyone at this point. I have more of the others, so I thought, wow, they could be great. But, you know, they always return the phone calls type of person. And I guess the new term is ghosting, which I guess is correct. Because I just found out with them. But um, it's really, you can't judge a book by its cover. You don't know. Someone with great success in the past may not again. Someone who's never done it before may be a superstar. Just treat everyone equally. And I will, I will my way I look at it, I'll work as hard in their business, my own team, as they'll work in their own. So if you find yourself making 80, 90 percent of the calls to them, probably not a good relationship. If it's 50-50, I'm mean, going to say calls, I mean everything, text, you know, any type of communication. Uh, but if you go back and forth and it's, it's very even and they're putting you on the phone with people or in Zoom with people or whatever, that usually, those usually be the people 
people that want to stick in and keep doing it. If you're just chasing it, you know, you can't, what's the expression? You can't push a wet noodle up the hill. So it's, a wet noodle? A wet noodle up the hill. You got that. Um, Brandon, do you have anything to contribute to that? Uh, yeah, I think for me, it's um, one, being authentic. Um, putting systems in place for our team so they can be successful. Um, and I feel like my team is only going to do 50% of what I do. So I've got to set the bar high. If I'm setting the bar high, they're seeing how to be a successful and how to be a great leader. And knowing what each person's strengths are and weaknesses are and helping them uh, become better leaders themselves and um, helping them become more coachable. Uh, for me, that's the, the plan and putting together a plan in place for them from the very beginning and setting those expectations of, hey, what do you want out of this business? Um, and that way, it puts the bar back on them and it's my job to hold them accountable for those expectations. Brandon, keep in mind for a sec. I've got one other thing. You just joined. Tell everybody when you joined the uh, May 15th. So May 15th, and you now are senior leader. You just <laughs> Some of them have had no experience in direct sales. What, what is it that you feel like has happened in your group that has brought that kind of leadership into your group? Well, I mean, I think for starters, it doesn't hurt when your wife has been very successful in the business to begin with. Um, but that will only carry you so far, I believe. I think you have to be honest with people. You have to put yourself into their world first. You need to know where they're at, where they see themselves at, and go into their life and then show how Amari can take them out of that position and lift them up. I think for us, when I sit down with someone, I really want to show them what Amari is going to do, not only for them, but their circle of people around them and how they're going to lift so many other people up around them. I think that's very crucial because I think everyone in here wants to be empowered. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all want to feel better. And when we make someone else feel better, it makes us feel good. Yeah. And um, that's what we try to do is, hey, this is Amari. This is a ground floor opportunity. Amazing products, amazing innovation and technology behind the products. And uh, we're ready to roll this, and we want you with us. And these are the reasons why. And I want to tell them what they have that I want on our team. What do you have I want on our team? And this is how it's going to benefit you, but it's going to benefit our team, and we're going to show you how. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda, as you've built your organizations, and you know, business and life is all about ebbing and falling, right? You're going to have uh, times when you have a lot of success, and you're going to have times where you have leaders that are thriving, and then times where leaders may not. Uh, be thriving like they once were. How do you manage that? How do you keep people engaged? You said something really great today that really resonated with me, and that is never quit on a bad day. <laughs> because you, lives change for people, and um, sometimes people get hit with really tough things in their life, and so um, they might change course, you can't really change course. You just have to keep going, you never quit, and it's amazing the abundance of the people that end up coming to you. And just keep on loving on the people that aren't with you at the moment, because they're gonna come back, and they're gonna take care of what's going on in their life, and you're just gonna keep on building yours, and um, just love upon your team, and it's really about your team. It's, this is such a relationship business, and that's what I love about this business, and building relationships with people, and helping them grow their business. Yeah, very, very nice. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> so, you are an attraction marketer. I am. <laughs> Thanks, Rich, for that question. 
So uh, I, I joked with my friend Rebecca over there about being in the three-figure club a couple of years ago, but in fact it was pretty painful to be in the three-figure club. Three-figure club, three-figure club. Three-figure life. Like I wasn't in the six-figure club, I was in the three-figure club. Right. You know, I was barely getting my products paid for. And, um, so I knew I didn't have a, the network and I didn't have the marketing background. Um, so I, I invested time and dollars into learning attraction marketing and how to use social media to attract people that I wanted to, to join me on this mission. And through that, that's how I ended up with Amari. So I started studying attraction marketing and then I found Amari, which was such the perfect fit. Um, so fast forward, um, I, I lead with the mission. Um, I lead, you know, my transformation story is my financial business transformation and my success in network marketing. Um, the, the mental wellness, yeah, take the products first. If you want to do well and attract leaders, take the products, right? But also, um, I lead with the mission and the opportunity that we have here. And honestly, I can trace most of my moments back to one Facebook post. And um, it's, it's about being authentic and genuine, like you guys, you know, and, and in that Facebook post I wrote something about are you sick of looking at your vision board and not being anywhere closer to it months or years later? And who does, you know, who has vision boards, network marketers? So I, I wrote a post about a network marketer who's looking for an opportunity. And I attracted people that were looking for an opportunity. And, um, it worked out. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 All of you attract people to your business because of what you do, whether it's through social media, uh, events, uh, whether it's through uh, showing up at different uh, networking groups or ways that you've been able to reach out and, and meet other leaders. Jess, you had an interesting experience in life because you have your own story. Uh, addiction recovery and things that you've been through. And one of the communities that you've really tried to um, connect with is the communities in the addiction recovery space. You found some fantastic leaders as a result of that. Do you mind commenting? What do you look for? What is it?